I flew the two actual aircraft uh, which were involved in 9-11, the flight number 175 and flight 93, the 757 that allegedly went down at Shanksville, and flight 175 is the aircraft that's uh, alleged to have hit the South Tower. I don't believe it's possible for, like I said, for a terrorist, a so-called terrorist, to train on a 172 then jump in a cockpit of a 757-767 glass cockpit and vertical navigate the aircraft, lateral navigate the aircraft and fly the airplane at speeds exceeding its design limit speed by well over 100 knots, make high speed to high bank turns uh, exceeding pulling probably 5, 6, 7 G's uh, and the aircraft would literally fall out of the sky. I couldn't do it and I'm absolutely positive they couldn't do it. There's a big discussion on the uh, internet about the plane speeds on 9/11. Right. Uh, they said that the plane that hit the second tower was doing about 540 miles an hour. I've talked to some people, and they said there's no way that it would have been possible to do that speed. My, my personal opinion is no. I agree with you. What somebody was doing was taking the top speed of the airplane at 35,000 feet and saying, "Okay, well, it goes that fast to sea level." Which, of course, it doesn't. Okay. I guess. In the case of a 727 that basically uh, lost control at 35,000 or 37,000 feet, and the flight data recorder uh, indicated a speed of Mach 1.1 uh, on the way down, and uh, which, by the way, they did recover the airplane, but on the way down it exceeded the speed of sound, and so it's possible that the thing was coming straight down. Okay, straight down, like, yeah, okay, I see what you mean. So it's possible to go any speed at that when you're going straight down, I guess. Oh, yeah. I mean, but that's not that's not uh, you know that's not what you're talking about. I, I have to tend to agree with you that uh, in level flight, uh, 767 would not go 540 miles an hour. Okay. Well, thank you very much you know, for your time. What limit would be I don't know, and you know, for the purpose of arguments, I don't know, but uh, uh, definitely we'll go 400 because the, the 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 indicated limit is about 350 knots, which is about 400 miles an hour. It might go 400. It might go 420. I was reading on the internet that you were an aeronautical engineer. Correct. Um, and I was wondering if you could help me out with a question. Uh, is it possible for a commercial airliner like a Boeing 767 to go over 500 miles an hour at sea level? Uh, at sea level? Oh, let's see, 500 miles an hour. Let me check here quickly. Uh, I can tell you that. Sounds pretty fast. <laughs> Because yeah, I've, I've, I've spoken to a few uh, a few uh, engineers, and they yeah. they've told me that it wouldn't be possible because of the uh, because of the, uh, the the intake of the thickness of the air into the engines that it wouldn't be able to generate. Well, the, the, quite, yes, the question is, oh, yeah, that's true. Whether the engines can handle that? That's more. Yeah, it could be that's an engine engine limitation. If the engines can. It, it would uh, no, you're right. Yeah, the engines are probably not be able to generate that much thrust at uh, at sea level. Yeah, there's one guy told me it would it would need to generate six yeah. times the amount of thrust. Yeah, because from uh, well, uh, yeah, it, well, it will be a draggy. You know, it, it's it's a pretty draggy airplane at that at that point. Uh, that's that, true, but uh, uh, one person told me it might even start to shake apart. Because of their resonance. Well, that's more uh, a Mach limitation, Mach number limitation, really. And the Mach number is not that bad, actually, at, uh, at 500 miles an hour on sea level. So, uh, but it's more matter. Yeah, can the angel handle handle that? Pro probably not. Probably can't. No. Eh? Handle that. Yeah. So, why are you trying to do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, actually, uh, I'm been in a big uh, debate with some people. Uh -huh. It seems that the people that know what they're talking about says it would be impossible to do, and the people that don't know what they're talking about says it's possible. Uh, yeah. Well, it, it all depends. I don't know what the engine uh, can handle, so that's, that's it's more uh, whether the engine can handle that high, uh, 
I am uh, William Octenborough at this density, uh, and I don't know if... Like, even even if you were able to attain that speed at sea level, mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't be able to really maneuver the plane, would you? Like, do a sharp left bank or something like that? No. But even then, you know, it would be... Uh, you would do it at altitude, too. You know, not sharp banks, but you, you can... Because, you know, what's important is really the Mach number. The Mach number's not that bad. You know, it's a little 0.7. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, uh... Uh... Uh, yeah, I, um, think about it for a second here, um, trying to think what the engine would do. Yes, let me see, uh, I look just, the uh, mark number's not bad, it's point sixty six. really, at that, that sea level. So, 66. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if the engines can handle it. That's that's a good question. Can I maybe tell you what I'm getting at here? Uh, I hope you don't take offense to it. Uh -huh. um, the planes on 9/11. Right. Okay. The second one, flight 175, that hit the second tower. They said it was going at. Uh, roughly 560 miles an hour at sea level. No, that's impossible. Like 100% impossible. Yes, again, you, you need so much power to push yourself through that air, through that density of air. Now, uh, the Pentagon, well, I, well, New York's obviously at sea level, and the Pentagon, I'm not sure. I, I'd assume it's you know, not all that much higher. You've got an aircraft that's optimized, so the engines have the right amount of horsepower for cruising at 30,000 feet at you know, 500 plus miles an hour. To do that at ground level, you need six times that amount of power. Those engines can't put out six times more power. So it cannot. Absolutely not. If you uh, changed out the motors so that they had, were motors that had six times the thrust, then, you know, theoretically you could, but then the structure is not strong enough. So, no. Under, under all circumstances, I'd say an absolute resounding no. Yeah, hi, it's Gordon Wilson calling from Vancouver. How are you? Oh, hi, good, sir. Thank you uh, very much for calling me back. Um, I was hoping you could uh, help me out with a quick question that I had for you. Sure. I noticed you're uh, familiar with aeronautical engineering and everything. I was uh, wondering, I was talking with some people and we were discussing uh, plane speeds. Yes. And... Uh, we were uh, talking about how if a Boeing 767, at cruising altitude of 35,000 feet, it flies at 530 miles an hour. Uh, is it possible to, for it to fly over 500 miles an hour at sea level? Uh, no. Like, that's like, uh, absolutely not? No. Yeah, it would be above the indicated uh, airspeed would be uh, greater than at uh, its maximum speed at sea level. Yeah, because I, uh, I had talked to a few people, they said it wouldn't be because uh, the air is three times as thicker. It is, exactly. And it would, it would need to generate, like, say, six times more thrust or something with the engine? Yeah, exactly. There's, there's drag involved here. It's, it's also the indi indicated versus true. As you get to altitude, indicate is approximately half the amount of true speed. Mm -hmm. Because if you think of the molecules of air, they're, they're further apart. So to, to get the same indicated airspeed, you've got to be going twice as fast to collect the same amount of molecules of air. In other words, if you're doing 200 knots uh, on, at uh, sea level, at 200 knots you're collecting, we'll just say, say 200 molecules of air which are spaced equally apart, right? Mm -hmm. When you're at altitude, when you're doing 200 knots, you're actually going twice as fast. Your true airspeed is 400 because the molecules of air are further apart because it's less dense. You've got to catch the same number of molecules to give you the indicated airspeed. Okay, so it would it would be impossible for a Boeing 767 to go over 500 miles an hour at sea level, then. Yeah. Um, even like say if it was even in a, like a shallow type of dive. Would it be able to any any airplane can be dive? Of course, then you've got the assistance of gravity, right? 
Yeah, I'd point it straight at the earth. But there, there, there comes a point where the, the the drag of the air overcomes the aerodynamics of the airplane. Okay, so it wouldn't be able to even in a shallow dive, per se. Now, using the word shallow, if you pointed it down, yes, you can get the speed, and that is one of the problems with uh, uh, jet airplanes at high altitudes. When you start down, you've got to be very careful that you don't exceed the maximum speed, and they do have uh, what we call a, a mock indicator, which will give you um, a noise to indicate that you're exceeding the maximum mock for the airplane. A clacker? Uh, yeah. Oh.